An artist who was ahead of his time for decades. Only a miracle saved the exhibit. A work with a secret message that came true in a hundred years. The National Art Museum of Ukraine. It was a tragedy for one architect and a unique laurel for another. It was designed by Petro Botsov and built by Vladislav Horodetsky. Today, it is not only the central institution of preserved art, but also a source of spiritual culture. Oil and canvas, black and white shades. A peacock in a bizarre background of soap bubbles which cling to each other. Two small skulls depicted on a decorative background. And an impeccable young athlete in the middle. He's dressed in an impeccable black suit. Портрет, який зображує молодого, гарну людину, трошки таку амбіційну. It is a portrait of a young, ambitious person with big, beautiful eyes that seem to look coldly down on viewers from above. Portrays a famous Ukrainian modernism painter, Vsevolod Maksimovich. It is a self-portrait, hence such great attention paid to personal traits that are, at first glance, not accidental. Maksimovich was a sort of narcissist, which can be traced in his other works, and this is glaringly evident in his self-portrait. If to look at the painting attentively, one can see the individual features of the artist. But it also forebodes something great, inevitable and tragic. What did he want to convey in his work? Did he truly forebode some shock? Or was it just some kind of a coincidence? Maksimovich was born in Poltava in 1894. His first teacher was Ivan Masilyadov, a renowned modernism artist. However, in truth, the studies were conducted in a rather peculiar manner. Together with his friends, they formed the so-called Garden of God Society with a major focus on antiquity. It is about art, philosophy, and sophistication. They turned to the antiquity theme both in their creative and daily lives. The beauty of the human body became the focus of the Garden of the Gods. They tried to be like ancient gods and goddesses. Beautiful and handsome, clothes were out of place at the Masayedov estate. The artists were nude, whatever the occasion. Nude models sat for completely nude artists. Needless to say, The Garden of Gods left its mark on the creative approach of Maksimovich. Physical beauty has the same value as spiritual beauty. This was the artist's philosophy. All his monumental paintings were based on the antique style. The 
з цього і почалося зображування Всеволоду Максимовичем атлетичним. Максимович depicted images of athletic beautiful figures that can be seen in many of the artist's painting. All his images were so beautiful and refined. It is a momental beauty, ethics and aesthetics. All this is present in his works. Maksimovich moved from Poltava to Moscow. He continued his studies at the studio of famous architect Professor Ivan Rehberg, where he made his first masterpieces. The self-portrait was made in 1913. It is the only picture in which he has portrayed himself. This work was destined to become prophetic. There's something mysterious about this work, for sure. In Moscow, Maksimovich, together with his friends who were futurists, plunged into bohemian life. He drank alcohol and took drugs. He was also obsessed with the idea of conquering Moscow. Maksimovich took part in exhibitions that were held in Moscow and St. Petersburg. These inspired him to organize and hold his own personal exhibition. In the spring of 1914, he brought his dream to fruition when he opened his own exhibition in Moscow. His first personal exhibition was arranged in Moscow. He was longing for success and money. But unfortunately, art critics didn't like his paintings. His exhibition didn't incite such delight as he had anticipated. He thought that everyone would call him a genius. Collectors didn't buy the works of Maksimovich at all. The failure of his personal exhibition dealt a serious blow to the ambitious artist. His wife, Nadia Nikolaeva, complicated the artist's situation. Nadia was a member of a futurist society. She was a poetess, and all futurists were in love with her. Maksimovich was no exception. Maksimovich dedicated two works to his beloved one. Fairy Princess was one of them. However, due to circumstances, the 20-year-old Maksimovich committed suicide on April 23, 1914. No one mentioned either Maksimovich nor his works for more than a decade, with the exception of his friends and their private correspondence. In 1926, Fedir Ernest, representative of the all-Ukrainian Taras Shevchenko Historical Museum, arrived in Moscow. Ernest often visited Moscow because of its galleries and exhibitions. It was the time of avant-garde, the beginning of an era, and the heyday of culture and art. He visited Russian museums and brought works by Ukrainian artists from Moscow to enrich Ukrainian collections of art. During his stay in Moscow, Fedor Ernest met Nadia Nikolaeva. She showed him works that were one of the causes of Maksimovich's suicide. The woman had been preserving them all that time. But why? Those works weren't appreciated by his contemporaries, and she herself had neglected their author. In 
Надія Ніколаєва – це була освічена людина, яка мала прекрасний блискучий смак. Надія Ніколаєва була освічена людина, яка мала прекрасний блискучий смак. Вона була освічена людина, яка мала прекрасний блискучий смак. Вона була освічена людина, яка мала прекрасний блискучий смак. Вона була освічена людина, яка мала прекрасний блискучий смак. Вона була освічена людина, яка мала прекрасний блискучий смак. Вона була освічена людина, яка мала прекрасний блискучий смак. і вона по достоинству, по праву оцінила його твори. Надія Николаєва була ангелом і демоном для Максимовича. Вона руйнувала артистів життя, але вона залишила його роботу. Федір Ернст Fedor Ernest was a person with aesthetic taste. He was enraptured by the paintings of Maksimovich. When he saw them, he was not able to leave him alone. Fedor Ernest was a person with aesthetic taste. He was enraptured by the paintings of Maksimovich. When he saw them, he was not able to leave him alone. Fedor Ernest was a person with aesthetic taste. He was enraptured by In our next program, we'll discuss why Maksimovich's works did not please the Soviet regime. That is why they were not allowed to be displayed. Why did the Soviet regime want to destroy the masterpieces? They even planned to burn the works of Maksimovich in Moscow. What did the author want to warn humanity about? Because his paintings are some sort of cold ciphers, a sort of mystery or something from another world.